Yeah, I'm here, guys, and I'm sorry that I'm <clears throat> taking up some of your day, but uh, I found out this morning that uh, I tested positive. Um, I've been beating my brains out to figure out where and how. I think I've been as diligent as anybody, which just goes to show that uh, it even tells you more how serious maybe the virus is. I mean, I, I know for a fact that I wasn't at any big parties, didn't visit any frat houses or sororities. I've been just kind of sitting in my own house and going to work. And uh, as you know, we've been testing for quite a while now with the antigen testing for over two weeks, tested negative every test. Um, I, I would say that I've been an advocate of wearing our masks and practicing social distancing. I'm still an advocate of that. I don't think... Uh, that deters me in any way, shape or form. I, I think we've got to understand that it is serious and it's invisible. And those two things, you know, you can look at all the different political things we've looked at. For the most part, I've stuck with the national CDC. I've stuck with our state stuff. I've stuck with our big 10 and our university and feel very comfortable in where I'm at. Um, this, isn't to say that the protocols don't work either. Um, I think it just says that sometimes, you know, where I got it, I, I have no clue. Um, you know, maybe uh, I touched something, maybe I did something else. I just can't figure it out, but uh, maybe I never will be able to. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, but I would say to you, don't let up for a second, <clears throat> especially those of you that have kids or families or even for yourself, you just got to stick to the protocol and hope for the best. And uh, when it doesn't work out like it didn't for me, <clears throat> I'm going to continue to to do what I got to do and continue to be an advocate just like I've been. The next week or so, I'm going to do what I always do at school. I'm going to watch a lot of film right here on my TV. I'm going to try to stream our practices in here. I'm going to be talking to my assistants. Uh, it was funny because like you always do with your staff last week, got into a little argument about something. And I said, wait till you guys become head coach. So I walked in today and I looked at DJ. I said, Hey, you know, see if you can handle these guys. Good luck. You know? And uh, I do think all kidding aside that um, my team's in great hands. I think it's good. It'll be good for DJ to uh, get a feel for what it's like to, uh, to run some people and order some people around. I think it's gonna be good for, for Aaron and Josh and, and, and uh, Frosty to uh, be captains now. And uh, I've always said a player coach team <clears throat> is better than a coach coach team. I don't have a sore throat. I'm not coughing a little bit. I think I'm a little hoarse from the last week of practice, you know? I, I really hadn't been able to do much for a long time. But, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to doing what I do. Uh, if I could do a favor for all the Spartans out there that you'll be reporting to, it'd be just take care of yourself. Do what you can do. Control what you can control. It's the same thing I told my team. You know, if you control everything and things don't work out, you can live with it. I can live with it. <clears throat> I'm going to live with it. I'm going to get better. The timeline for me was tested for two weeks, felt great. Saturday, I just felt a little bit of a cough, maybe the chills a little bit, kept taking my temperature. It was perfect. Sunday, same thing. I was working out every day. I'm riding my Peloton. It was great. And, uh, you know, went to bed a little earlier, haven't slept much because it's getting near season. And then uh, today I got up, I felt the best I felt. <clears throat> tested negative Saturday and Sunday and uh, got a good ride in this morning, went in and tested at 730 and it was positive. And then after that, I had the PCR test to verify and it's been verified. And so now, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to go into the testing protocol and uh, do whatever they tell me to do. And it looks like uh, I'm going to be sitting home for 10 days or eight days or whatever it is. And, uh, but I won't quit working. So if you got questions, I'll be glad to answer the best I can. 
Our first question comes from Chris Solari with the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Tom, I uh, hope you're feeling okay and hope the family's feeling okay. More importantly, um, you know, that's obviously one big thing is how is everybody else feeling? And, and I guess, um, you know, you have been an advocate of this and, and you guys have experienced this already with DJ. Um, how, how, have, how has that kind of shaped your view of this uh, from the outset? Well, it's, it's been very difficult for DJ because every day when we're talking about it, you know, with our players and everything, I mean, DJ's sitting there and I can't even imagine how hard it's been on him. Uh, you're right about my family. I, I've joked a lot that, that my wife has that shield around a lot and uh, like I'm at Myers or something. And, you know, I'm, I'm at work a lot these days. So I really didn't spend a lot of time, you know, with my kids or anything, my son, Steven, who's there. But, you know, we've done a great job of every time we come together as a team, we mask up. Everybody wears a mask. We have a meeting. We mask up. Um, we tried to follow everything. Right now, no players, no family have tested positive. Uh, hopefully that will remain that way and I'll be the only uh, weak link in this group. But, uh, you know, don't feel bad for me. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure there's still days ahead that I got to, you know, deal with but uh right now i feel pretty good and uh you know i could i could go back to work if it was legal but it's not so i'm going to follow that protocol our next question goes to larry lage at the associated press i hope you feel better and i hope dj doesn't put the press in while you're away <laughs> you'll probably start zoning everybody you know just the press and zone it'll please you and a few other guys I was going for a chuckle. Thank you. So I just want, what was your emotions, your emotional guy, uh, as I am, when, when you found this out, how, what were your emotions and um, how much of a headache is this going to be for college basketball in general with coaches, players, staff? Um, obviously a lot of people are getting this and it's not going away. Well, I think you're right. And um, I think, uh, you know, it's going to be a headache. And I, I tell my team every day, how we handle adversity will determine who the champion is going to be. And that includes me. You know, I get to tell firsthand. And like I said, I put a challenge out to my assistants and a challenge out to my players that, you know, this is the time when you find out if your leadership is good. And, uh, and I think it's going to be. I think they'll do a great job with me out. Hell, they probably won't want me to come back. But it is something that we talk about. I'm on so many committees and everybody's been talking about our big 10 committee, my national committee, everybody's looking at the same stuff, you know, that uh, no matter what you do, um, it's a little bit like Russian roulette, you know, you just, you never know, uh, you do the best you can do. And I feel like I have. And so I don't have any regrets. I, I you know, I looked at it this morning and I said, wow, of all the people, you know, I didn't move out of this house for three months. I mean, it, that was hard in itself. And then uh, when I did start moving out, I mean, I'm sure Matt has told you, I'm sure you guys have, you know, it's hard to get an interview with me. Uh, we do something that's outside. Um, we tried our best to do what we're supposed to do. And yet we still got to live. So I would say, stay with the protocol. Um, you know, continue to to uh, advise people to just social distance, stay away. And maybe where I screwed up, I don't know, but touching things and then touching my eyes or that, uh, you know, I just can't figure out where in the last four or five days in, in tr tracing back this could have happened. But um, it doesn't really matter because I'm sure I may never know I'm just going to keep doing my job and, uh, and, and, and don't worry, I'll be healthy as hell in a couple of weeks to get back after you guys when you write bad articles. Next question, we'll go to Justin Rose with WXYZ. Hopefully I don't ask a bad question. Um, Greg Campy had the similar thing happen to him. Have you reached out to Greg and, and talked to him when, when he was diagnosed and, and vice versa? You know, I did try to call him uh, two days ago, and then over the weekend, I didn't. And uh, hell, now we both probably, maybe we can talk about what we're going to do against each other because we got a lot of time. He's sitting there, I'm sitting here. But I will say this, it's been amazing. I want to thank a lot of you, but it's been amazing. The coaches, 
man, you know, um, around the country, I mean, both college and pro that have reached out already. And uh, I think that's what people do. You know, they reach out and they, uh, they try to lend their support. But uh, you know what? I, I feel comfortable in where I am and what I'm doing. And I, uh, I'm going to follow everything to the T, get back. I'm already on my feet, but get back outside as soon as I can. And if I could follow up real quick, um, you know, whether you want to admit it or not, you're a pretty powerful voice in the college basketball world. How delicate does this make the situation of playing, especially when cases are going up around the country? You're, you're trying to, you, you guys are in an interesting spot. You guys got shut down right when your tournament was about to start. And now you've got to watch every other league try to go about it. Have you thought about how college basketball can press forward during the second wave, if you will? Yeah, you know, I, I guess the only thing I've been a little disappointed in is how people have handled it. You know, here I am um, with it. So I, that, that'll lead me up for a lot of criticism, maybe. But when I look around the country and I see what's going on, or even in our own city there for a while, and, you know, uh, I know everybody's got to do what they got to do. I know it's hard to be 20. I understand all the facets of life. I mean, I deal with 20 year olds every day of my life. But it, it, it's no joke, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do. And, you know, if you look at the national medical people, they predicted a lot of things that have happened, including the second wave. So maybe we should all figure out that uh, even though I think I'm the smartest and heaven only knows you guys think you're the smartest, but I think we are not as smart as the medical people. And that's kind of what I've tried to tell my players and, and myself, to be honest with you. Feel better, man. Thanks. Our next question will go out to Lindsey Huddleston. Hey, Tom, wishing you all the best. And uh, you've been a great advocate for this. But from a mental toughness standpoint, is it possible that prior to COVID and everything that the program has gone through, that this has kind of better helped you respond to getting a diagnosis and being able to push forward in a certain positive way? You know, Lindsey, in your uh, field of of work over the years that I've known you, um, I think you're right on the money. You know, I, I, I tell our players this, that, you know, there's no better teacher than experience. And experience means how you handle, how you deal with tough situations. You know, I, I think of Cassius last year, did anybody handle it better than him? I had to be there every day. I had to learn, you know. Um, now I'm on the line a little bit. You know, I, I look at what DJ went through and and how do you sit in every meeting? We don't have a meeting at our building that we don't talk about COVID and what are our players doing tonight. And, you know, after the Michigan game, I remembered I called Mel and I said, hey, Mel, do you want the offense at your house and the defense at my house? Or do you want the defense at your house and the offense at my house? And he thought we could do both, you know. And, 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 and I don't say that jokingly. I just say, you know, we do understand, but I think, experience helps you it's whether we can relate those experiences and and get kids to buy in you know and uh but i think anytime you go through adversity and if you come out standing um you're you're better served for the next thing that hits and heaven only knows in the last three four years we've been through a lot and uh i i don't think that's good that i should be able to handle things but i I do feel more experienced at handling them. And I, I do believe what I said, that whoever wins the Big Ten, whoever does well this year, is going to have to do it by handling all these adverse things and nothing more adverse than COVID uh, as of right now. So, yes, I do. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, Coach. Get better. Thanks, man. All right. We got time for a few more. We'll go to Matt Charbonneau with the Detroit News. I just got a call from my favorite guy. Maybe he's got a remedy. I don't know if you can see it, but Mateen. Is calling, so I guess uh, when former players call, that means I got to be as tough as him. But go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. Sorry, I have no remedies for you. I apologize, but I, I do hope you you're feeling. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm useless. But anyway, I, I was kind of going along the lines of Lindsay. But you, you know, with this season, that's probably going to be strange anyway. So that being able to adapt, but having guys around that have been around, especially a guy like Josh, a pretty experienced guy who's been through his own stuff, is almost seems like it's going to help have an even keel earlier in the season and not maybe a lot of ups and downs. Cause you got to feel like there's probably going to be some ups and downs this year. 
this year at least. Yeah, I think there is. And I think, uh, you know, you look at some of the programs. I, I just had a talk with my team yesterday and then my captains, and we brought up Josh's situation, you know, what he's been through. And he says, man, a year or two ago, I didn't think I'd ever play again. And here he's as healthy as he's been in three years. And so I, I think that's true. I look at some of the teams out there. You try to look at football and you see teams that were picked in the top 10 and might be 0-3. And, and then you see other teams, you know, it's going to hit everybody different. Sometimes there'll be so much illness that maybe they don't have their full strength. Sometimes it's how you adapt to it, how you handle it. And uh, I know my assistants met with my team at, at 3 o'clock. I have a Zoom call with them tonight. And I'm going to talk about leadership. I'm going to talk about resiliency. I'm going to talk about handling all this and, and working your way through it and realize that in your college life, there's going to be a lot of situations you go against. But in your real life, there'll be a million of them. And uh, somehow I got to make the negative a positive, And that's what I plan on doing. All right, we'll take two final questions. We'll go to Kyle Austin and then wrap up with Dana O'Neill. Kyle. Thanks, Matt. Hey, hey, Tom, just wondering uh, how much have you been able to think about how these next 10 days are going to go for you as far as how how you kind of keep doing your job from afar? Did, did, did Nick give you any tips on how to how to coach for a Zoom practice or how is that all going to work? Well, I tell you who gave me some tips was Mel because I thought Mel did an unbelievable job in the spring on how he handled trying to put it in an offense and a defense through Zoom. You know, it'll be a little different in, in – uh, in basketball, but, um, you know, I got a good experienced staff that's been there. I mean, they don't need me. And I, hopefully, uh, my, uh, my players kind of rally. And, you know, I, I sent each one of those captains a little text because I think it's going to be important how they deal with it, you know? And so, um, what I got to do is make sure around here, you know, I've had some experience, you know, it seemed like, uh, the first three months I, told you I rode my Peloton and I cleaned my garage and I went for bike rides, you know, now it's getting a little colder. I'll ride my Peloton the hell with my garage and I'll just watch film. So uh, one way or another, I'm going to get my job done. I got a lot of faith in DJ and the guys getting their job done. And I'm hoping that my team grows a little bit when they don't have me there. Um, it really is. Uh, I think a, a, a good trial run for them to see how they adjust, how the juniors and seniors bring along the freshmen and sophomores. And uh, hopefully uh, that'll make us stronger when I get back. All right. And we'll wrap it up with Dana O'Neill from The Athletic. Tom, I'm, I'm hoping you're feeling better. Um, so I, this is kind of a weird question to ask because here we sit a couple of weeks away from the season, but you're at this cusp of this, you know, and, and we're going to have more people testing positive and games are going to get canceled. And is it going to be worth it? I mean, at the end of all this, are we going to have a legitimacy to this season? Do you think? You know, I really do Dana. I don't know why I do. I just really do. I, I think, um, Hey, we're going through a tough time. I I've had problems in this political onslaught that we've had for the last six months, figuring out, you know, what is what? I I, uh, I never really got caught up in the politics. I got caught up, instead of being political, I, I, I tried to be more medical. But um, I do agree, too, that we can't quit living. And so where's the happy medium? What do we do? Each one of these cases, am I a billboard for, you know, it can happen to anybody. Uh, for the most part, the guy stayed in. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. Uh, uh, could I be helping other people? If so, great. If it's my team, even better. But um, I, I think we can. I think we'll still have legitimacy to the season. I think college football, it's been difficult. You've been, you've had one Wisconsin. But for the most part, the others have been out a week and that, you know, it could be a little more difficult in the Big Ten with our 21 days. But um, we're going to find out, you know, I, I, do I think it's worth it? Yes. I, I think I think what people don't understand, Dana, if you're not with these guys morning, noon, and night, I mean, I'm in my 60s and going half crazy. If I was 20, I mean, you've got a daughter, if I remember right, that's in the college years. And, uh, 
you know, it's really hard on these kids. I mean, that they feel invincible like you did, like I did, like most of you did when you were 20. Um, I would say, well, Joe, you probably didn't feel that way at 20, but most of us did. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, that, you know, we got to help get them through it. And I, I remember when we went through 9-11, and I thought one of the greatest things we did is we all rallied together as a country, and uh, we kept moving forward. You know, we've been a pretty divided country, if you ask me, not to get into the political uh, stuff that's out there. But, you know, we got to come together as a country. And you know what we got to come together as? The 20-year-olds and the 80-year-olds got to get on the same page. And if we do that, uh, we can make this big negative into a big positive. And I'm going to try to help in that respect. And uh, so I'm hoping for their sake and for all of our sakes, we can do it. And um, I guess, Dana, time will tell. All right. I'll, let, I'll let you know when I get to 20, Tom. Huh? I'll let you know when I get to 20. Was that in the 1800s or were you, <laughs> when were you born, Woj? <laughs> the previous I century. I, I know Matt's trying to cut it off and I agree. And, and yeah, I probably won't be on. So, I mean, if anybody's got a quick one, I don't want to. I just want you to know I'm, I'm doing fine, but it is only a couple of days in. Could get a little worse, could be nothing. Um, I just say, follow the protocol. And those of you that, uh, you know, God bless you. I don't blame you. you. You believe in what you believe in and you should. But, but I'm telling you, uh, for a guy who uh, I think is brought up on, on toughness, it doesn't bother me to wear a mask. If I got to wear an apron or anything else, I'm cool with it. I just want to stay safe and I want everybody else to stay safe and uh, do what you can do to give you the best chance. And that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I'll leave it at that. 